Welcome back to Star Flag Media. Today is April the 25th, 2023, and uh, bringing you some quick updates here uh, between uh, Nintendo and Microsoft. Uh, you know, as we all know, in the last few months, uh, Microsoft has been trying to uh, secure a deal where they can acquire Activision Blizzard. Uh, with that said, uh, all of the encompassing franchises that Activision Blizzard has uh, is a pretty big chunk of the third-party gaming industry. Um, the biggest uh, one, of course, probably being uh, Call of Duty uh, as a whole. That franchise is just huge and sells general making amounts of numbers every year. Even if it has been a slowly declining franchise, the numbers are still astronomical uh, to the point where, you know, it's easily a billion dollar game and it's by itself. So uh, the acquisition is a big deal. As we all know, Sony uh, did not like the fact that uh, Microsoft would be acquiring one of the largest third party, if not, it is actually the largest third party developer in, in gaming uh, with fears that uh, they would monopolize uh, Call of Duty amongst uh, their other franchises on the Activision Blizzard side of things. Of course, Microsoft has... Uh, uh, Previously published other uh, of their own first party games after acquisitions um, to uh, Sony and Nintendo platforms. So there is no uh, legitimate. Uh, I mean, there could be some concern there, but legitimately speaking here, uh, Microsoft has been known to look at certain franchises and then say, you know, is this going to benefit Xbox to just be exclusive? It's going to make Xbox grow or do we know that this title will perhaps perform better on other systems um, and therefore publish it uh, you know multiple uh, on multiple platforms one of the best examples uh, that you can probably think of is the minecraft franchise uh, that they acquired I mean minecraft uh, you know, famously uh, is on everything. I mean, it was already across uh, multiple platforms by the time Microsoft got their hands on the on the license uh, and the product and the franchise itself. Um, but even after the fact, um, they made it a point to not only continue to publish new versions of Minecraft on other platforms, uh, but they went with that uh, very uh, famous advertising campaign about four years ago. The uh, play together or survive together, be together, better together uh, 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 advertisement for Minecraft when they decided they were going to do cross play uh, across uh, Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Um, Sony, of course, even back then was late to the party. They didn't want to open up their platform to cross-platform play. Uh, you know, they came up with a number of excuses and then finally they caved. Um, when you look at a game like Minecraft, for example, Minecraft Legends came out and it, ru it, it roughly sold about, out of all the copies that came out across all the platforms, it sold around 80%, around 78 to, se to, 78 to 80% of its copies on the switch so that 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 alone shows you the other the other 20 percent split or so was across uh all the other platforms so you know you split that with sony and you split that with xbox sales which of course get cam cannibalized a bit with the game pass and then even pc and steam um it's it just shows you that they knew that that franchise for example um has uh, a dedicated uh, fan base or an audience that would probably be best if they serviced it across all platforms. And the Switch was the uh, hands-down uh, uh, juggernaut when it came to selling Minecraft Legends. Um, so Microsoft will look at that from a marketing standpoint and go, hmm, if we kept that just on Game Pass, first of all, it would lose... Uh, all the sales. Um, most people that have Xbox or Game Pass or are willing to even, uh, you know, uh, play Minecraft on Xbox has probably already got Game Pass and therefore not really going to purchase a copy of that game for that platform. So um, I think they would look at it at a game uh, game by game basis. Of course, there are going to be some games where Microsoft will probably push for them to stay um, in their ecosystem and in their first party. I mean, it's it's incredibly naive to think otherwise uh, you know at the end of the day these are businesses right uh, we'd like to think that they have gamers uh, hearts uh, uh, 
at the other end thinking, oh, well, this is best for gamers. But at the end of the day, no, it, it is a business. And Microsoft has been ruthless uh, in the past, um, not just gaming wise, but just as a business in general to make sure that they thrive and they continue to thrive. And when you look at Xbox, it has never won a console generation since it came out in 2001. I mean, you know, it eked by uh, GameCube in that first generation by maybe a couple million, maybe a million and a half, two million units. It wasn't a huge success um, with the first Xbox. Xbox 360 came in last place behind the PlayStation. And again, the Wii was just the, uh, the the power player of that generation. I mean, that's not to say they weren't successful. They still sold a crap ton of Xbox 360s. So did Sony uh, with this PlayStation 3 and, and Nintendo with the Wii. It was just a, a very massive successful uh, generation with that and then again with the xbox one it, it failed to secure first place um, especially after the connect debacle where you had to always be connected at the very beginning that whole debacle um, and then uh, you know they corrected that later on but still they, they lagged behind and right now with the xbox series s and x Microsoft is behind. Um, you know, we look at uh, Switch sales. We look at PlayStation um, Five sales. Uh, you know, they're they're supposedly getting outsold three to one by the PlayStation Five. You know, that's just a crazy amount of 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 playstations out there compared to xboxes so uh, microsoft has to do something to continue to grow and and secure its fan base of course there's going to be those diehard xbox uh fanboys out there right and they will never uh uh leave xbox aside but at the same time those you know sega had those guys too and uh we all know what happened to sega with time if the business is no longer profitable in the hardware spectrum i do still believe that microsoft may go that that software route or that virtual console route right where they they just do something like a game pass and sell you uh, a box that connects to their service without any uh, optical drives or any physical media i i totally believe that's the future um you can quote me on that when it happens in the next i say uh i say in the next decade which Brings us to the next point. Uh, the FTC wants to know more about what Nintendo and Microsoft are doing uh, as far as their Call of Duty 10 year sale. So um, let's think. Let's think of what that what that in turn. Uh, what that means right so the ftc uh finds out microsoft is doing a 10-year uh, deal with nintendo they're promising uh that they do the same for sony uh to put call of duty on their platform for the next decade um now whether that means it's the switch uh there's a heated debate out there saying oh well the pl the switch can't handle it uh they could never uh Take a game like uh, Call of Duty the way it is right now and put it on the Switch. And Microsoft's gone on record that they would build a game from the ground up for Nintendo's platform. So if they got Treyarch to get on this, for example, like they did back in the day for the Wii and Wii U, um, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of Call of Duty, uh, whether it be Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Black Ops 2, you know, those games... Um, they all made their way onto the Wii eventually. Uh, so I don't think Black Ops 2 did, but all of the other ones certainly did, including World at War. And uh, of course, they weren't as robust looking in the uh, visuals department as their HD counterparts on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. But we had Treyarch come in, use that game engine, pair it back to a 480p console, and essentially make full online version of those games with all of the bells and whistles running on the Wii with voice chat. And, uh, you know, here it was, uh, a Call of Duty experience on the Wii. And each one of those games, you can look this up, went on to sell well over a million copies on the Wii back when the development uh, cost of the Wii was very low because it was just an older technology to develop for. So... If they were to go that route with the Switch and pair it back to say, you know, you, what you could do last generation, um, I do believe you would have Call of Duty running uh, with last generation or Switch type graphics uh, on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it, there's no reason that they just wouldn't make it 
the way uh, they did last uh, the last time. Pared down from the ground up, make a switch version uh, with, uh, you know, locked in 30 frames per second. You're not going to expect 60 frames. You're not going to expect Ultra HD graphics. And this is probably going to be a 580p uh, handheld mode and a, and a 720p at best docked mode um, at 30 frames per second. And, and you know, it might even be crossplay. And why not? You look at games like Apex Legends, they run on the Switch. You look at other games uh, like Fortnite that run on the Switch and are all cross-platform. You can definitely take your Switch online right now and play with someone on the PlayStation 4, um, excuse me, and even PlayStation 5 uh, across cross-platforms, and you can then uh, play with each other. So the FTC wants to know what the details are to this 10-year uh, deal um, for Nintendo's platform. Uh, they want uh, they want to have Steven Singer, which is the vice president of marketing, I believe, for Ni excuse me, Nintendo of America. He's the guy who brokered this deal with Microsoft. He's the guy that signed on the dotted line. Um, they want him to come in for a deposition. And according to the filing, the FTC wants to run a seven to eight hour deposition from Steven Singer. And of course, Nintendo does not like this at all. So. What is Nintendo doing? They're pushing back. They're saying, hey, uh, this is past the deadline. Uh, FTC is overstepping their bounds, and uh, they have no right to know what is in our internal deal with Microsoft when it comes to this deal, when, when it comes to this Call of Duty uh, uh, contract. Um, you can understand why. What if in that 10-year deal there is something about what their next platform might be or what their next platform has as far as capabilities? Um, Nintendo would then have to uh, ask the courts to seal or redact um, any of those documents or the testimony so that it doesn't give up any company secrets. And, of course, they would then uh, put themselves out there uh, for things leaking online as they always and certainly would do. Seven hours of testimony is a long time to be sitting in front of a judge and a lawyer and, and getting grilled over uh, a contract signing that you did for one video game that may uh, give up company secrets. So Nintendo wants uh, this subpoena to be thrown out uh, due to the deadline that they filed. I mean, who knows uh, what, what will happen, you know, if Nintendo decides that they're going to go cloud-based next generation as well. I mean, we just never know. There, there might be that same Call of Duty experience across the board in that case, right? What if they're the ones who decide, you know what, uh, physical hardware will be a box that we connect to a Nintendo subscription fee, and this is what you're getting, and then put physical media slowly to the side. We're already seeing 100 gigabyte, you know, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S discs excuse me yeah series x discs are full already and games like uh star wars uh fallen jedi uh or the new one that's coming out jedi survivor uh it won't fit completely on the disc and already has that you need a download uh icon right on the front of their of their uh, covers so i mean uh we don't know what's going on. We don't know what the future holds, and Nintendo certainly doesn't want to divulge anything to the FTC that might compromise their future in gaming. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm very curious to see what happens with this. Will Nintendo uh, have to or be forced to go that route and actually go to court and defend a contract for a single video game? I'm I'm really interested to see what's going on with this. You know, at the end of the day, I do believe this deal will go through no problem for Microsoft. It's already, you know, Sony's already been kicking and screaming this entire time for this deal not to go through. Um, and I think it's going to happen anyway. Um, and then they're going to have to force to play. They're going to have to be forced to play ball again, just like they did with crossplay. Um, and uh, they'll probably send the same 10 year Call of Duty experience deal. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think Nintendo will have to go to court? Do you think they will, uh, you know, divulge any company secrets? Is this going to hurt them? Um, and do you believe that Microsoft and uh, Activision Blizzard will merge? Or will the FTC block this at the end of the day and Sony get their way? Um, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we are a growing channel and it really would help me a lot. And if you like the video, hit like. If you don't like it, leave a comment below. Tell me what we can do better. And as always, uh, thanks for coming.